Burns was at that time 27 years old. This newfound fame took him to Edinburgh, where he was accepted in higher society than he was used to. But it was obvious to him that he was more popular for his works than his personality. When he overheard a woman referring to him as that clodhopper Burns, he replied, Madam, give me time and I will match your hoisted bosom and false bum. <laughs> But in love, things did improve for Burns. Due to his no newfound fame, Jean's parents were prepared to allow a wedding. Rabbi and Jean did marry and moved to Dumfries, where he said it was his intention to be, to settle down and become a part-time farmer, part-time excise man, part-time poet, and full-time husband. And I believe that the ones in his poem, A Cottage Saturday Night, epitomized the, the true feelings he had for life in these very, very difficult times, where he describes a poor, work-weary farmer coming home, and as he catches sight of his humble house, his spirits are raised, and he thinks of his wife and his children, and how they'll talk, eat, and pray together while reading from the Big Haw Bible. However, the farm in Ellisland was not as productive as, as expected, and Burns had to become a full-time excise man. Covering over 200 miles a week on his horse, Jenny Geddes, so called after another lady from Edinburgh who, like Rabbi, had been subjected to the cutty stool to explain her behaviour at the Kirk sessions, but instead of listening to the public rebuke, she picked the stool up, threw it at the minister, and stormed out. But for all Rabbi's sins, he was a caring, sensitive person who said, If I could, I would wipe all tears from all eyes. Now, did these sound like the words of a drunken blackguard? Burns' work was diverse and he could create passion, whether writing love songs or politically based ones, like <coughs> Scots Mohay, You Jacobites by Name, or Parcel of Roads in a Nation. He spoke out in support of the underdog at every opportunity, and only through some influential connections was he spared a long holiday in Botany Bay for voicing his opinions. He was a supporter of the French Revolution, and when a French government schooner was apprehended in the Solway Firth, he bought its four cannon for six pounds and sent them back to the revolutionaries with a letter of sympathy. After many years of poor, poor health brought on, possibly by too much hard work in his childhood and teens, in 1796, Burns was a shadow of his former self. The constant worry of trying to raise a growing family on the salary of a customs man and the little income that he gained from his writing is only added to the plight. Desperate to regain his health and strength, he followed the advice of a friend and doctor, William Maxwell, in July 1796, by first bathing in the local spring waters. Then, to make matters work, he plunged himself into the second part of the treatment by wading up to his armpits into the decidedly chilly waters of the Solway Firth. Three days later, after, after having dragged himself back to his home in Dumfries, he died. And when Robert Burns was dying, he spoke of death, because he said, well, when you're dying, what else have you got to talk about? When he said he was as weak as all the tears my gene has shed for me. He forgave his accusers and he wrote, Farewell my friends, farewell, farewell my foes, By peace with these, my love with those, The bursting tears my heart declare, Farewell my bonny banks of air. Now we Scots are brought up with stories about Bruce, Wallace and Bonnie Prince Chadley, who saved our country's heritage, or tried to. But Robert Burns is an, internation, an international cultural icon and one of Scotland's favourite sons. He was both a man of the time and a man for all times. And while he was not without his human flaws, as he would have been the first to acknowledge, his egalitarian ideals have helped cement his universal and timeless appeal. He will be remembered for all of his works, but none so much as All Lang Syne. The world's adopted anthem of friendship. And here's a hand, my trusty freer, and gee's a hand of thine. We'll tack a cup of kindness yet for all lines. 
ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise and join me in the toast, which is the immortal memory of Robert Burns.